A theatre-owning koala, a timid elephant, an overworked pig, a soulful gorilla, a punk rock porcupine, and an egotistical mouse are just some of the characters you'll meet in the animated musical movie Sing. Yippee Kaye movie lovers, it's Jan here, and in this video I'm going to be revealing behind the scenes secrets and facts about the movie Sing, including some cool Easter eggs. Just before I start, I've got a giveaway for some awesome Sing merchandise. All you need to do for a chance to win is subscribe and leave a comment on this video about your favourite song, character or Easter egg from the movie. For details about the prizes and bonus ways to enter the giveaway, check out the Gleam link in the video description below. And if you've not seen the movie yet, just to let you know, there are spoilers ahead. Okay now, let's take a look at 17 fun facts and Easter eggs in the movie Sing. For the soulful singing gorilla Johnny, the filmmakers channeled Michael J. Fox's Marty McFly from Back to the Future. But that's just the start of Sing's hat tips to the iconic mid-80s movie. Remember when the theatre's electricity suddenly shuts down? Well, Buster tries to get the power back on by climbing out onto the theatre's facade while pulling an electric cable from his building and trying to connect it to a cable from the building next door. But like Doc at the end of Back to the Future, Buster's cable doesn't quite reach and needs an extra tug. Oh, and did you notice the hands of the clock outside Buster's theatre are on 10 and 12. A shout out to the scene in Back to the Future. And in Sing's finale, when the punk rocking porcupine Ash performs Set It All Free, she finishes with a final flourish on her guitar as she knee slides across the stage. Then she opens her eyes to find the audience in stunned silence. Which is a nod to Marty McFly's guitar heavy knee sliding performance of Johnny Be Good in Back to the Future. The inspiration behind Sing and its characters comes from a variety of places including Alan Parker's 1991 hit musical The Commitments, and for the character of Gunter, a sparkly spandex wearing pig whose dance performances are super high on energy, the filmmakers took cues from Brad Pitt's personal trainer character in the Coen Brothers comedy Burn After Reading. As for Rosita, an overburdened mother to 25 piglets, Sing's writer-director Garth Jennings based her on his own wife, who left her job as a fashion designer to raise their four children, and like Rosita, faced self-doubt when she decided to return to her former profession. Sing also includes a couple of Easter eggs to another of Illumination's animated movies, The Secret Life of Pets, which is especially nice because if you remember, a poster for Sing appeared on the back of the bus in that movie. Okay, first up, when Sing's bank robbing gorilla gang turns up, they're wearing masks that look just like the crazy bunny Snowball, who's the leader of the flushed pets gang in The Secret Life of Pets. And in another hat tip to that movie, there's a crocodile called Derek in both films. In Sing, Derek works at the casino frequented by Mike, the tiny mouse with an enormous ego. And in The Secret Life of Pets, Derek is a member of the Flush Pets gang. During the five years it took to bring the final film to life, Sing went through various changes and there were a number of rejected concepts. For example, when the filmmakers first came up with the idea of the theatre-owning koala Buster Moon, he was much more of a full-on con artist than he is in the final movie. However, as they developed the movie, they realised that over-emphasising Buster's swindling ways and bad manners was making him way too unlikable, so they dialed down that aspect of his character. Another character who went through a big change during the making of the movie was a bullish business mogul who, up until late in the film's development, was going to be a big part of the story. But in the end, the filmmakers decided he wasn't necessary to the plot, so his character had a major downgrade and now you can only see him in one scene, which is at the bank where he gives a credit card to the Sinatra singing Mouse Mike, who's voiced by Seth MacFarlane. As well as writing and directing Sing, Garth Jennings also provides the voice of Buster's assistant, the elderly lizard Miss Crawley. And keeping it in the family, Jennings' four sons, Oscar, Leo, Casper and Asa, all pop up in the film, voicing piglets. As does Asha Blinkoff, whose voice you'll know best as Dracula's grandson, Dennis, in the animated movie Hotel Transylvania 2. By the way, did you spot that the speaking voice of theatrical diva Nana Noodleman is provided by absolutely fabulous star Jennifer Saunders, who also voiced the Queen of England in Illumination's Minions movie? But when she's singing, Nana owes her voice to Dreamgirl star Jennifer Hudson. The Grand Budapest Hotel director Wes Anderson also cameos as a giraffe called Daniel, who Buster axes after the auditions because they can't hear each other due to the difference in their heights. The voices of Despicable Me director Chris Reno and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World director Edgar Wright also appear briefly in Sing. 
Sing is absolutely jam-packed, with music with over 65 songs covering everything from Lady Gaga and John Legend to Frank Sinatra and the Beatles. However, one particular track, Elton John's I'm Still Standing, proved especially tough to get permission to use, taking six months to get the go-ahead, as at the time, Elton John's company, Rocket Pictures, was thinking of using it for their own animated movie, the Gnomeo and Juliet sequel, Sherlock Gnomes. The final thing that sealed the deal in Sing's favour was director Garth Jennings' meeting with David Furnish, Elton John's husband and co-chief at Rocket Pictures, and showing him the scene where Taron Egerton's character Johnny belts out the song in the movie. Speaking of Taron Egerton, although Sing is his first full-on musical experience on the big screen, Egerton grew up singing and touring in school choirs, and while he was training at London's prestigious Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, he won the Stephen Sondheim Society Student Performer of the Year Award for his rendition of two musical numbers including Giants in the Sky from Sondheim's Into the Woods. However, as Singh's director had never heard Edgerton's vocals before, the Kingsman Secret Service star auditioned for the part of Johnny by performing one of his favourite songs, Otis Redding's These Arms of Mine. By the way, if you're wondering about those five brightly dressed red pandas who pop up singing and dancing several times during the movie, there's a shout out to the music of the Japanese pop and fashion phenomenon that is Carrie Pamu Pamu. Now, who's your favourite character in Sing and what songs would you like to see in a Sing sequel? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and comment for your chance to win some cool Sing merchandise. For more details and bonus ways to enter the giveaway, check out the Gleam link in the video description below. You can watch more videos like this by clicking or tapping here and remember to turn on your notifications to make sure you get all my new videos as soon as they're ready. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee ki movie lovers!